Hello lovely people and welcome back to my channel. So it was just over a year now where I did a video that talked about the lessons I learned in the first year of my PhD and last year I completed the second year of my PhD and I learned one or two extra things along the way. So this is basically a follow-on video and I'm going to talk about some of the lessons I've learned in the second year of my PhD. So first and foremost is that, at least for me, it took a really long time for me to find the workflow that worked best for me. Now what I mean by this is, when you're doing your undergrad studies, you have a schedule, you know, you have classes that you go to, you have labs that you go to, you have a set place that you work. But when you get to your postgraduate studies, and specifically for me, because I'm a correspondence-based student who works from home, I really lack the structure. And it took a really, really long time for me to build the structure into my workflow. You know, I needed to determine when it was best for me to work, where it was best for me to work, but not only that, also how it was best for me to work. You know, with your thesis, there are so many things going on and you really need to figure out a system that works best for you. So for example, if you read scientific papers, do you print out your scientific papers to read them or do you read them on your computer? How do you store your scientific papers? How do you keep a record of what you've read, what you haven't read? When you're taking notes, do you use a Word document or do you write out your notes? Do you use one notebook for one thing and another notebook for another thing or do you have one notebook for all? What, what I struggled with most of all was, you know, you could be doing something completely random and all of a sudden you have a stroke of inspiration and you're like, I really, really need to remember that thought but I don't need that thought right now. I know I'm going to need it later on when I'm writing my thesis. So where do I put that thought so I remember it later on when I'm writing my thesis? And so it's just all these things that take, for me, like I said, it took a really, really long time to figure out the best work system for me. So when you're starting out, think about these things, but also do some trial and error and eventually it will all fall into place and you'll figure out the system that works best for you. So lesson number two is that the second year of your PhD really feels like you're just running on a treadmill. You're running, you're running, you're running, you're doing all this work, but you're actually going nowhere. Well, it feels like you're going nowhere. It's, as I say, especially in your second year, because when you start off your PhD, you just started, you're raring to go, you've got this bright-eyed enthusiasm, you're starting a new project, you, maybe you're starting to work on your field work, you're gathering all this interesting information, you're reading lots of literature that you haven't read before. So really, there's a, there's a big drive for you to do your work in your first year. And I feel like also in your last year, in your third year, you know, you are almost at the end, you've got your last little bits to do to wrap up. So again, you have this motivation. But in your second year, I don't know, for me, second year felt very wishy-washy. I felt like I worked consistently throughout the year, but I feel like at the end of the day, I have nothing to show for it. You know, you don't produce something at the end of your second year. You don't have your thesis yet. Maybe you have some data analysis, but also for me, I'm still waiting for a lot of my data to come in. So it's not like I could finalize my data analysis. So I look back and I think, I don't really know what I accomplished last year. So a big tip that I've started doing now is that at the end of every week, I record what I've been doing throughout the week. So just quick notes on, um, exactly what I've done, maybe what data I've analyzed, what papers I've read, just so that you can look back and see, okay, wait, I have actually done something. Otherwise, it can be very disheartening. And finally, you know, all of the tips I spoke about in my first video still apply. So especially reading, it's still very, very important. You know, science is ever on the march. There are always new scientific papers being released. So you have to make sure you keep up to date with your reading so you can keep up to date with the latest techniques and tricks, etc. Also see if there are any conferences that you can attend that are relevant to your work. It's always useful to go to conferences. You can start to present some of your data that you've collected. You can learn from the leaders in the field, what's happening exactly now at this time, what science is doing. So that's also very, very helpful. And yeah, just keep going. You know, it's a long haul, but just keep working at it. And eventually the second year will be over. And now I've made it to my third and final year. Thank goodness. So I hope you found this video a little bit helpful. If you're a PhD student and you have any advice, please leave it in the comments down below. Let me know what you thought. Subscribe to my channel, like my video, all the usual things. And until next time, I hope you all have a happy day.